All right, we're going to read from this PDF that one of my friends sent me called America is the True Old World. And this is about ancient Egyptian temples and artifacts being discovered in the Grand Canyon, but also being hidden and suppressed so that the Americans would not find out about it. Uh, I posted some videos on TikTok about this. And then one of my friends that was watching my videos saw that I was talking about the, the Grand Canyon and he sent me this PDF. So we're just going to scroll through it. Uh, this is my first time going through this. So let's see what it says. We got the Shiva temple, the Isis temple, and the Cheops pyramid. Now, I have some different theories about what happened in the Grand Canyon, but it's, it's open to debate. I think it was either blown up in some kind of war, or it was, it was uh, carved out like a quarry or it was carved out to be an intentional irrigation canal at some point, and there was temples along it, and then, I mean, either some kind of uh, natural or engineered uh, disaster happened, which wiped it out, or maybe it was blown up in, in the Pyramid Wars or something like that. I'm not sure, but it's pretty interesting, so we're going we're gonna to dive into this a little bit. Amenhotep Chavis El Bey, it says here. <clears throat> America is the true old world. Okay, we already saw that one. Okay, so this is the author. Again, this is the first time I've even scrolled through this. I haven't even scrolled like two or three pages into it. So we're kind of just going through this in real time. Okay, there's a weird elongated photo. Okay, figure zero. This book cover is an image, or this book cover image is evidence of ancient temples that are located in the Grand Canyon in Phoenix, Arizona. These temples are Indian-style step pyramids that are so ancient they are in ruins. Table of contents. Okay, let's scroll past this. Let's get into some of these chapters here. So this is volume one. My friend actually sent me two PDFs. This is the first one. There's another one we can go through also. Okay, legal disclaimer, we don't care about that. About the author. Amenhotep Chavez El Bey, formerly known as Eugene James Williams, is an honorary 33-degree Mason, crown knight of Kush, a philosopher, metaphysician, author of 14 books, poet, paralegal, historian, researcher, and ghost writer. Looks like that's, I'm assuming that's a picture of the author. Dedication. I dedicate this book to God and all my truth-seeking friends and to my beautiful family for believing in me. Special dedications to the great scholars who have paved the way for me and influenced me in my own studies. Dr. Alim El Bey, Hakim Bey, Taj Tarek Bey, Dr. Ivan Van Sertima, J.A. Rogers, Dr. Ali Muhammad, Horace Butler, and Bobby Hemet. I also dedicate this book to scholars like myself and these new scholars who are now paving the way. Dan Calloway, Kurimio Aha, Otto Chanuas, that one's a mouthful, <laughs> Otto Ch Chithonis one, and many others that did not, or that I did not name. I thank you all. Preface. This book is a series of four books broken down into four volumes. Okay, so my friend sent me the first two volumes. I might have to uh, do a little more digging to get the other ones. This book is volume one of four, so there is much more to come. This book demonstrates that beloved and renowned scholars like Dr. Ben, Dr. John Henrik, uh, John Henrik Clark, Dr. Diop, Dr. Ivan, and Sertima, and etc., were wrong about Africa being the birthplace of civilization. How? It's a very bold statement. <clears throat> well, first of all, this is what they were taught at the time. Because they did not have access to the tools and resources that we now have to make decisions or to, to, to make the discoveries in this book. Therefore, Pan-Africanism, which is now a religion, is a concept that was given to us by accredited Western academics, Negro scholars who got it all wrong, because the America is Atlantis, which is the mother country of Egypt. This book will also prove that the Americas is the true old world, 
and that the Maya Indian civilized the Egyptians, Indians, and the Sumerians. It's a bold statement. Pan-Africanism is a dead religion that has so-called African-Americans, blackamoors, associated with slavery. It has Berber Indians associated with coming from Lucy the Ape. It has Berber Indians associated with the struggle of a third world country. And Pan-Africans has made Berber Indians abandon our land rights to everyone except for Africa. Because you have been taught to believe that Berber Indians only come from Africa. I can go on and on about how destructive Pan-Africanism is to Berber Indians and in the Americas, but I am not here to talk about our cousins in Africa. Yes, some of us do not, uh, do not need to go to Africa, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, and bring civilization like we always have, because the biggest, strongest, and smartest Ethiopians are in the Americas. Therefore, we are the best candidates for the job. I am just here to tell you that you are so much more than an African-American. You have, uh, excuse me, you have to know thyself before you can help anyone else. This book is actually open, or excuse me, this book is actually an open challenge to any and all scholars, whether they be professional or amateur scholars. I don't rely on any degrees from Western colleges to qualify me to write this book because I will let that the evidence that I have present qualify this book as factual. I am of the firm belief that it is the current established Western academia model of history, which is out of Africa theory, is the main reason why none of the discoveries listed in this book are not known and are not talked about if known because no one wants to go against the established Western academia. To go against Western academia is to be labeled a fraud and an incompetent person, so I understand why the information in this book is not known or either not talked about. We are in the age of Aquarius, which is the information age, the age of knowing, so everything that was hidden will come to light. Over the last... Hundreds of years, people have been infatuated with ancient civilizations like Sumer, Egypt, and India. However, those civilizations could never be in the New World, the Americas, because this landmass was first discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1492, which is what they teach us in school. As a result of most people believing that the Americas is the New World, most people are completely wrong about how old the Americas are, and that the said ancient civilizations were also in the Americas too. This book is designed to set the record straight. Enjoy. Chapter 1. America is the true old world. All of the major foods necessary to sustain life come from the Americas. The Americas, North, South, and Central America, are the true old world because all of the major foods needed to sustain life came from the Americas and were later taken to Africa and Asia. Foods like squash, tomatoes, corn, potatoes, beans, wheat, yams, wild rice, which was modified to create modern white rice, peanuts, and 90% of all of our fruits and vegetables come from the Americas. Food, plants, native... Oh, wait, this is a, a link right here. Okay. The oldest pyramids and the most pyramids are in the Americas. The oldest and biggest pyramids are in the Americas. The Cholula Pyramid is the biggest pyramid in the world because its dimensions are 400 by 400 meters and has a total volume of 4.45 million cubic meters, almost twice that of the Great Pyramid of Giza. See figure one, the Great Cholula Pyramid. The Cholula Pyramid is also a step pyramid, so we are dealing with a very ancient pyramid because the step pyramids were the first pyramids. Okay, so I guess this is a like a model of of one of these pyramids here that he's talking about. Figure one. This image is of the Cholula Pyramid, the largest pyramid structure in the world. Notice that they built a church on top of this pyramid to try to hide it, and they covered up the Egyptian city that was once all around this huge pyramid. All right, the pyramids in America 
or in the Americas, are all step pyramids, which were your first pyramids. According to Egyptologists, the step pyramid of Saqqara, the pyramid of Djoser, is the first pyramid that the Egyptians built, dated around uh, 2667 through 2648 BC, third dynasty, which is over 4,700 years ago. Egyptologists agree that the step pyramid of Saqqara, the pyramid of Djoser, was the first pyramid because they agree that it is the archetype of all pyramids. You have more pyramids in North America than all of Egypt combined. See figure two of the pyramids in North America, Central America, figure three, South America, figure four, five, and six. Now, if we include the pyramids in Central and South America, it's not even a contest anymore as far as who has the most pyramids between East or West, because the West, America, clearly has more pyramids. Pyramids in America. We've got a map here of all these different pyramids. So a lot of these pyramids in the United States, um, recently I went to the East Coast to Georgia, and I got to, to see some of the, some of the sites, and uh, they got covered up in dirt. And the, the Smithsonian went to these places, because you can read all the history about it, it's there. The Smithsonian went to these places back in the 1800s, and they took all the artifacts, hid them away. They left a little bit for the people to see, but only what they wanted, uh, what they allowed the people to see. All the significant stuff was taken out, and then they buried all these things in dirt, and they just call them, oh, there's like these mounds, and the, there's the serpent mound, and these, oh yeah, they just, they lie about it. They just say, oh yeah, these Indians, they, they built these mounds with buckets of dirt because they wanted to, you know, have a house and a hut that was on a higher plane so they could, you know, uh, exert their dominance. <laughs> it's all a bunch of BS. Okay, we're going to scroll down some more. Okay, there's the... Uh, the City of the Gods, also known as Teotihuacan, down in my Mexico City. I actually visited this place back in 2017. Okay, it's showing the astronomical alignments of Teotihuacan. These, this one in the middle, these are the pyramids that they found in China, which are, from what I understand, uh, the government has made this place off limits. No one is allowed to go see it. And then Giza, and then these are all aligned with the star constellation of Orion. This is a different image from Google Earth. As you can see, there also is a three pyramid alignment in Teotihuacan, which is now near Mexico, uh, Mexico City in Central America. There's Machu Picchu in Peru. Everyone's probably familiar with that one. That's a pretty trendy place nowadays. And then here's another one. Figure 5 is an image of the largest adobe pyramid complex in the world, which is located in Cahuachi, Peru. Look at all of those pyramids. Yeah, that's a lot of pyramids. Okay, let's keep going here. Some more images. Figure six, this is an image of Caral Supe, which is the oldest civilization discovered so far in Peru, South America. Caral, Peru, is the first civilization in America. This is the oldest city known, or the oldest known city in the Americas and in the world. This is a very old step pyramid from the looks of it. There was even a tower once there. I don't know if that's the oldest city there is, I mean, there, I'm sure there's a lot of people that might uh, that might debate this or argue this. The Americas has the oldest mummies. The Spirit Cave, uh, or the Spirit Cave Mummy, from Spirit Cave Fallon, Nevada, which is 9,400 years old. Spirit Cave Mummy is the oldest mummy in the world, and it is the uh, it's in the Americas. Additionally. We also have the Chinchoro mummies in South America in North Chile. These mummies are over 7,000 years old. This archaeological anthropological evidence demonstrates that the Americas is the true old world. Scholars should be looking in the America uh, for the oldest civilizations because the oldest mummies are in the Americas. Their scientific approach on where to look should be completely opposite. 
based on all the evidence of the Americas being the old world. Common sense tells me to look in the Americas for the oldest civilizations because the oldest mummies have been found in the Americas. I guess there's some pictures of some of these these mummies, these well, let's see what's down here. This, so that one's the spirit cave. And here's another one. These are the Chinchoro mummies in North Chile. And here's another mummy. The Mayan Indians civilized the Egyptians. This is the link to... The Kansas City Journal, entitled Prehistoric Man, 1886. The article was written by Edward or Edwin Walters. Let's see if we can if we can pull up this link really quick and see what it says here. Article clip from Kansas City Journal: <clears throat> Prehistoric Man, the Human Race, and its dis. Persians, dispersions. How long has the earth been uh, peopled, and when and where was the beginning? Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna like read through this whole thing, but if you want to screenshot it and read it yourself, let's read a little bit of it. It says the article. A prehistoric battle which appeared in April last has called out many letters of inquiry. Time would not allow individual answers, so this attempt must suffice for all inquiries up to date. During the past 10 years, many phases of this subject have been discussed through the column or the columns of the journal, but in order to bring the facts before the minds of the readers, they must, uh, or excuse me, that they may the more fully appreciate the subject, it will be necessary to use some of the data that we have appeared during the past years. The exact time and place of man's first appearance on the earth will probably never be known to a certainty. So far as we know, no recognized author or authority has ever attempted to give us any light on this past or on this part of the subject. Let's scroll down a little bit. Okay. Now that we, now this is what we are forced to conclude with regard to many of the glacial deposits found throughout the north, and uh, the north half of the northern hemisphere, in the vicinity of Kansas City are mummies. Oh, excuse me, numerous, not mummies, numerous glacial deposits, principally sand and gravel. What are the proofs that they are truly glacial? Okay, they're talking about all the, the geology. Okay, we're just gonna. We're going to close out of this and then keep reading here. So this, he claims this article proves that the oldest civilization was in the Yucatan and Central America and that Egypt was first uh, peopled by immigrants from the Yucatan. This article gives six facts to support it. The article states, in pertinent part, after correlating all data that has been made public to the present time, the conclusion is unavoidable that the oldest civilizations was in the Yucatan in Central America. Future discoveries may change this conclusion. It seems that Egypt was first people by immigrants from Yucatan. Space will allow only a few facts that clearly indicate the truth of this assertion. First, the pyramids of the Yucatan, some of them are much larger than any found in Egypt, that of the Cheops not accepted. Second, the pyramids of Egypt bear structural evidences of having been modeled on those of the Yucatan, no, notably one of or of the one at Kolama, which covers 23 acres. Third, the early Egyptians and the Mayans of Yucatan had the same system of reckoning time, but the Mayans, or the Mayas, developed a system that was far superior and which antedated that of Egypt. Fourth, the Mayans manufactured a cement that was of the same material as that of Egypt. Fifth, 
The architecture of Yucatan is of the same general type as that of ancient Egypt, but it is finer and seems to have been a model that the Egyptians attempted to imitate. Sixth, the art of both countries as displayed in their ceramics and architecture is of the same type or school that of Yucatan much being or excuse me, being much more highly developed. According to one of these traditions, a portion of the Mayas about 40,000 years ago rebelled against the ruling king and finally withdrew to the north. The branch seems to have passed along the coast of the Gulf of Mexico and to, uh, and to have reached Louisiana in the, Missis- in the lower Mississippi Valley between 30,000 and 35,000 years ago. A few years ago, some caissons were sunk uh, for bridge piers on Bayo La Forche, Louisiana. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. At the depth of about 62 feet, some graves were uncovered. They had been made on the sandy beach of the Gulf of Mexico, and it had been covered with oyster shells. This presents, or excuse me, the present coast is about 110 miles from that point. The average thickness of the freshwater mud, so far as surveyed, is not less than 40 feet from this point to the Gulf Coast. Taking the average amount of solid matter mud that has annually passed down the Mississippi River to form these, uh, these delta and gulf plain, and we have a measuring unit. The United States government observations made daily since 1872, if I remember correctly, gives the annual amount at 57,872,000 cubic yards per year. This, or by this unit, these graves are at least 20, 29,000 years old. From the lower Mississippi, these people spread over much of the central portion of the North American continent, especially through the valley of the Ohio and Mississippi and the lake region. These seem to have been original mound builders, or been the original mound builders. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, all those mounds around the East Coast that have been covered up in dirt. Those were like ancient, ancient cities. Those were all built out of, out of stone and megalithic type architecture, but the Smithsonian and the government, they covered them all, all up with dirt to hide them away from the, uh, the American tax slaves. The above, is the, uh, the above said article is very significant because it mentions the mound builders. Who were the mound builders? Well, the mound builders were also known as the ancient ones, a.k.a. the Washita, Murs, Muirs, or Moors who are the oldest indigenous people on the planet, according to the United Nations. We will discuss the Washita Moors in greater detail later in this book. See chapter 12. Washita Moors are five civilized tribes. The oldest burial remains of modern-day humans was found in Louisiana and the lower Mississippi River. What's also significant about the said article is that it gives evidence of the Mayas reaching Louisiana and the lower Mississippi Valley between 30,000 years ago. And the articles, or the article gives evidence of Mayan burial remains, graves that are 29,000 years old, which is older than any burial remains of modern day humans found thus far anywhere. The famous bones of Lucy that were found in Africa do not count as the oldest bones of modern-day humans because Lucy was not a modern-day human. Lucy was a hominid, an ape, an ape-like species that the Charles Darwin theory of evolution rests upon because academics profess that modern-day man evolved from Lucy, a.k.a. apes. Now, we all know, well, I mean, not all people know this, but anyone with half a brain that doesn't have a calcified pineal gland can figure out that this whole theory of Darwin's evolution is a bunch of BS and that at some point there was a, some genetic engineering that happened. Okay, it's got some more photos here. What is this thing?
Figure 10. This is an engraving in the temple of Has Hasepset, an 18th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh, which depicts maize corn from Punt, which is only indigenous to the Americas. The Americas is the oldest land mass. Further evidence to support the said article can be found, uh, or can be found in the book Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx by Augustus Lee Plong Plongian. The Mayas were the ancestors of the Egyptians. Like the Mayas, the Egyptians regarded the West as the region of darkness, the place where the souls of the dead return to the bosom of their ancestors in the realm of Amente. The king Osiris sat on a throne in the midst of the waters there. Also, it was that Thoth performed his office of scribe was. Then the worship of the Sinocephalus, his totem, brought to Egypt from the land of the West. Pythagoras borrowed his knowledge of numbers and their meanings from the Egyptians. These received their science from the Mayas, those civilized strangers, their inch, or excuse me, their ancestors, who in remote ages coming from the east and from the west had settled and brought civilization to the banks of the Nile. Such being the case, it is but natural that we should find the same doctrine regarding cosmogamy or cosmogony and the meaning of numbers in Mayak, their mother country, in the land of the West. See Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx by Augustus Lee Plong Plongian or Plongian. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right or that one right either. The Maya sages doubtless had reached similar conclusions, since they called their country Mayak, that is the land that first emerged from the bosom of the deep, the country of the shoot. And the Egyptians, according to Herodotus, boasted that their ancestors in the land of the West were the oldest men on earth. And again, see Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx. Here's some more pictures. That's, I think that's looking like a, that looks like corn right there where the arrow is. Right there, you see that? I think that's corn. Figure 11, this is an engraving from the temple of Hasepset, an 18th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh, which depicts pineapples. Okay, it was a pineapple, not a corn. Pineapples from Punt, which is only indigenous to the Americas. Huh, I think it's because it looks like corn because the photo is like elongated, maybe. But okay. What do you think? Does that look more like a corn or a pineapple? I guess, yeah, that would look like a pineapple. I think the photo, like, for whatever reason, the this PDF loaded these photos and it, like, stretched them out so the aspect ratio is elongated and everything looks way skinnier than it's it's supposed to be. Evidence to support the above statement coming from the Queen Mu book, Mayak, is, or excuse me, that is the land that first emerged from the bosom of the deep, can be found in Jean Luis Agassiz's book, Geological Sketches in 1866, Chapter 1, America is the Old World. According to Jean, a renowned biologist and geologist from Harvard, America is the Old World. And he states as follows First born among continents, America has been falsely denominated the, uh, the New World. Hers was the first dry land lifted out of the waters. Hers was the first shore washed by the ocean that en uh, enveloped all the earth besides, and while Europe was represented only by islands rising here and there above sea, America, Atlantis, already stretched in an unbroken line, uh, an unbroken line of land from Nova Scotia to the far west. Evidence to support the fact that the Mayas are the ancestors of the Egyptians can be found in the tomb of the Maya temple of the Maya in Egypt because there is a Maya on the wall that is dressed in Kemetian Egyptian garb. Author and tour guide Brian Forrester, 
He's got a big YouTube channel if you ever look this guy up. Brian Forrester has done uh, fantastic work researching all this stuff. Brian Forrester and Stephen Miller walk us through the Temple of Maya to show us the evidence. Here is the video evidence so you can see it for yourself and be the judge. Let's see if we can pull it up really quick. Hang on here. Okay, it just pulled up YouTube, but let's... uh... Oh, wait. Sorry. We have to copy the whole thing. It didn't hyperlink the entire URL. It only... It only hyperlinked the, the YouTube homepage. Okay, let's try this again. Could the Mayan civilization have visited ancient Egypt? Kemet School of Ancient Mysticism. Okay, this is only a six minute video, so we'll we'll let it we'll let it play here. Uh, he uploaded this nine years ago. Absolute special access. Today, we get to enter the tomb of Maya. Stephen, please. Well, this is a chapel or a temple of Maya. Now, the Maya was a title, not a name, of both men and women throughout dynastic times. This particular era is around the 18th dynasty, the time of the so-called King Horemheb. Now, the key thing here is 1997, King came to the United States to California. He, my research partner, Bob Butler, and I met him for a couple weeks and we discussed. One of the things he discussed on a return trip to Egypt in September of 1997 would be, he said, he would show us evidence of a Mayan temple in Egypt. Mayan as in culture. Exactly. And I said, this I never heard of. No, it's not in any text. No one has ever mentioned. <coughs> okay. We came here. This was arranged differently then. A lot of this is new construction. It was not this way in 1997. Uh, first of all, I looked on the wall. Behind you, you see that that is Maya. But it looks typically commissioned. Right. And I'm looking around, typically commissioned. All it looks. So Hakim would use the expression, well, you know, Stephen went in Rome to do as the Romans do. He's living in Kemet. He's going to pass in Kemet. So he's betraying himself as a commission. So I said, well, Papa, this is great, but I can't go with this in front of an academic audience. They left me off the stage. There's nothing here to identify with the culture we're talking about. Uh, but then there was a keeper like this gentleman here, was here, didn't speak any English, but saw that I was perplexed. He said, come here. This then was boarded up with just a wooden door, and it was latched there. He threw away the wooden slabs, opened the door, and he said, look up. Oh. And that is the key. Took a picture in 1997 sent it to Mayan daykeeper Hanbat's men. He said he recognizes this as the language of the Itza people, where is Chichen Itza. He said it's an ancient language. But a lot of people are not sure about Hanbat's men. So we went one step further. In 2010, I got to meet Dan Alejandro Sul Ojaj. He is the wisdom keeper, the head of the Quiche Maya of all of Guatemala. I showed him this picture, and his eyes went as big as saucers. And he said to me, that is the language of my ancestors. That is a calendar. That is telling the date of when Maya was here. And how we can't read it, he can't even still read it, but he knows that the circles and squares and different colors and ranges and the spokes in the wheel are indications of a date. So this has never been discussed by any Egyptologist. They cannot put this in a commission context. There is nothing, or maybe there is others that Yusuf has seen, but there's nothing like this in the rest of Egypt. So Mayan elders recognize this as part of their culture. So now the key is Maya, the word, is a title. Men and women had the title. Very interesting because we've talked about the difference between Egyptian, Arabic, and other Arabic. In Egypt, one of the key words for water is Maya. It is not sp sp pronounced the same way in any other Arabic country. If you went to Saudi Arabia, they would say ma or man. Only in Egypt is it pronounced Maya. And it means water. So I asked Hakim, could the title Maya actually have meant, meant he who came from across the water, or ones who came from across the water? He said yes. So here is what we call diffusionism 
archaeology, diffusionism, diffusionism, anthropology, saying that there had to be cultural contact between these individuals thousands of miles across the sea. And this is the evidence that Hakim told us that there was a Mayan living in Egypt 3,300 years ago. Let somebody else define that for me and tell me that that is Kamisha or Egyptian or dynastic or anything else. Okay, pretty interesting stuff so far. Let's, uh, let's keep reading. This video evidence proves contact between the two cultures, but I will take a step farther by giving Dr. Ivan Van Sertima's book, the, uh, They Came Before Columbus. In Dr. Sertima's said book, he demonstrates contact between Egypt, or between Egypt and the Americas with evidence of all the agricultural trade for items like tobacco, cocaine, maize corn, See figure 10, the pineapples, etc. All of which I just listed are only native to the Americas. So there was definitely contact between South American Indians and the Egyptians. Well, I mean, that's obvious just by, I mean, even without that, that, that calendar thing, you can just look at the architecture of all the pyramids in the Americas and you can see it's the same exact architecture as uh, a lot of the stuff in Egypt. So, you know, again, like it talks about this in the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, where it talks about how after the Great Deluge, Thoth and his crew went out and relaunched civilizations. So this is all very in alignment with a lot of the stuff um, that it talks about, yeah, again, in, in, in Thoth, in, in the, uh, the Anunnaki stuff. I strongly believe that Punt was in South America. I strongly believe this because the Egyptians do come from Punt, Ethiopian, and both nations. Mayas and Egyptians did trading, commerce, business together, which is evident when you look at the pharaoh's Hatepsut's temple uh, engraving, which depicts a maize corn, or a maize corn cob and a pineapple. Those are the photos we, we looked at earlier, both of which are indigenous to the Americas. The said figures... In 10 and 11 of the maize corn and the pineapple is strong evidence that Punt was in South America because the Egyptians showed on their temple engravings that they had brought from Punt, which had to be in the Americas, South America, because maize and pineapples are only indigenous to the Americas. Punt is akin to Ethiopia because Punt is, or excuse me, because Punt like Ethiopia is considered to be the birthplace of Egypt, both of which were in the Americas, because Atlantis was in the Americas, mostly South America, as I will demonstrate later. Dr. Gunnar Thompson argues that Punt was a Phoenician trading base near the, uh, the equator on the American mainland. The New World was a major source of copper, which is found mainly in the Andes, in Peru, and Isle Royal in Lake Superior. Paul Gallas argued that the land of Punt was the Puno region of Peru on the shores of Lake Titicaca, where there are many old gold and antimony mines, uh, A metals that were brought back from Punt. The reed, excuse me, the reed boats used on Lake Titicaca are almost identical to those used in ancient Egypt. One, Gunnar Thompson, Secret Voyages to the New World. Nine, True Adventures from the Forbidden Chronicles of American Discovery. Seattle, Washington, Misty Isles Press, 2006, page 173-197. Gunnar Thompson, How the Portuguese Outfoxed Columbus in Frank Joseph E.D. Underneath, underneathing, excuse me, not underneathing, Unearthing Ancient America, the Lost Sagas of, con of Conquerors, Castaways, and Scoundrels. Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. New Page Books, 2008. Gunnar Thompson, The Fantasy Isles, Into Continents, How Myths Became Realities, and the hand or At the Hands of the Portuguese Cartographers. And it's got a website link right there. Atlantis Discovered. Atlantis was in the Americas. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna stop the video there. We'll continue a little bit more in another upload. But what do you think about this guy's theory here about the Americas and them coming first before the Egyptians? Let me know in the comments.